Hey guys, Patriot coming to you from the desktop with the shortened version of the Phoenix RC40 review. If you saw the previous upload, you'll notice that that was the long RC40 review that ran about 54-55 minutes. So there's a lot of detail in that view if you're a flashaholic or just kind of starting to get into this stuff and you're kind of wondering about uh, flashlights, you might enjoy the longer version. Otherwise, uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep it to the uh, short version. This is actually a separate recording from uh, the uh, original version. So I'm going to talk about a few things, update, maybe correct a couple things that I had to annotate in the other one. But basically, if you watch the other one, you're not going to learn a whole lot new in this video. What you're looking at in front of you is the Phoenix RC40. This is the light that we're doing the review on. This is a smaller format light, a medium format light, the Phoenix TK75. And Phoenix's older large format light, non-plug-in uh, rechargeable, Phoenix TK70. You can also see that we've got uh, a little array of lights with a couple of Polarian HIDs over here. An Olight SR90, the TK70. Uh, this is just an older uh, wise lead tactical that I have and then a couple of more compact quad and triple XML lights followed by the uh, Nightcore uh, Caveman. Before we get that RC40 out in front of you, I do want to show you the box that it came in. The production uh, packaging that you'll be getting is going to have the uh, Phoenix labeling all over it. It's going to have the specifications to throw in uh, all of the, uh, the vitals, we'll say, mentioned can see that uh, this is a really nice case. This is reminiscent of the uh, TK40 and TK41 and uh, some of the other lights that uh, uh, have come out. Even the uh, TK75 came in a uh, hard case like this. You can see that this fits real nice. There's actually little uh, partitions that fit uh, in between the heat fins on this light so it holds it very securely. It also came with a 12 volt charger here comes with a couple of uh, spare o-rings and it actually has a little uh, replaceable charging port flap cover that would go right here so if this one breaks or tears or anything you actually have a replaceable one. It also has a AC unit which is plugged in here ready for use or it will be in a second uh, but uh, I didn't shove it all back in the, uh, the uh, box just because it's a little bit hard to fit everything in there. Okay, as we bring the RC40 into frame, you can see that it's a big light. It's got a big head on it, about 108 millimeters uh, diameter to this outer portion. Uh, the light's about 299 millimeters long, so it's uh, shorter than a lot of other uh, large format searchlights. Uh, diameter here at the battery tube is about 48 millimeters from the flat portion to the flat portion and from the corner to the corner it's about 50 millimeters so it's actually smaller in diameter than this TK75 that carries four 18650s. This light actually carries six 18650s in two groups of three so uh, a little bit uh, smaller handle or, or I should say smaller in diameter. Now, again, the main difference between this light and the TK75 or the TK70 is that it, it has an onboard recharging capability. You simply lift up this little flap right here, reaching down for the plug. We plug this in, and you can see how those lights will progressively light uh, throughout its charging phase. And then at the end of the charging phase, all four of those little LEDs stay lit blue, and you know that it's done. Then you just unplug this push in your uh, port cover again and I've noticed that this is a very waterproof system it seems like it's much tighter and uh, seems like it's a little bit thicker rubber on there than what we saw in the SR90. In the long version of the RC40 review that I posted uh, previously I actually thought that this was a stainless steel bezel around here it isn't it's aluminum I actually uh, <laughs> prefer that because there's enough meat here in the aluminum that uh, it's going to protect that lens nicely without the additional weight of a uh, of a steel or a stainless steel uh, bezel on there. So I really like uh, a lot of the attention that went into this light was in scaling, and uh, we'll kind of dig into that in a minute. And and weight. So they didn't want to have an overly heavy light. They knew, uh, Phoenix knew that this light was going to be carried in the field a lot, probably a lot by uh, professional users, whether that's a fire department or police or military, uh, search and rescue, so forth. And uh, they really kept the weight to a minimum. In fact, it is uh, 
uh, overall weight is 46.2 ounces, 310 grams, or I think that that's 2.88 pounds. You can see here that the heat fins are very thick and robust. The uh, most exposed heat fin here at the back is actually thicker than the four uh, heat fins in front of it. Two switches here, an on-off switch and a mode switch. We'll get into the user interface here shortly because this is going to be a pretty short review. Uh, it's got some standard type knurling here. It is a symmetrical pattern. It seems to work pretty good. It doesn't feel like a slippery light in use. Along with these flats carved in here, your uh, your fingers kind of have a, uh, a place to, to sink into the light. So you get a pretty good grip on this light. It's not nearly as aggressive as the grip here on the Olight, uh, which I always appreciated. But uh, there's a little bit more weight involved uh, with this setup as well. Let's give you a good close look here at that reflector, or all four reflectors I should say. You can see that... Uh, The reflector surface has a minimum amount of uh, rings or imperfections that overall it's pretty slippery and glossy in there. It really contributes to a lot of throw, about 126,000 according to Phoenix. I actually measured 131,000 uh, K Lux in my own tests. It's possible that my instrumentation isn't quite as accurate as theirs, but uh, in most cases, uh, actually in every case of this light, I found that it either met specifications or exceeded specifications. Those LEDs, by the way, are XML U2s. You can see they have pretty deep reflectors, not as deep as the TK70 reflectors, but in fact, a throw between uh, with these two lights is just about identical. This is listed at 130,000 uh, throw lux or candela, and this one's listed at 126,000 candela. Big difference in lumens though, this was 2200 lumens in the TK70, and this is 3500 lumens max output in the RC40. So throws about the same overall lumen output, uh, a whole different story. Now some that are new to flashlights might be asking, well, what's the difference? How can, how can this have so much more lumens but not throw very far? Well, probably the best analogy or the best way to put it was think of a, a big kitchen light or a CFL light or a, a fluorescent tube lamp in your kitchen. You have a lot of lumens, let's say 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 lumens in that array of CFL lights, but if you took that out in, in the park at night, if you had a way to transport that and uh, empower it, and you tried to shine that downrange, there would be a lot of lumens, so you'd have a, a lot of flood out there, but it's not projecting the light forward. That's how you can actually have a light that's only 900 lumens like this, with 60,000 candela throw, and it's going to throw the light, that available lumens that it's producing, it's going to uh, focus it and, uh, and send it down range more efficiently. All of this, of course, is a factor of the surface brightness of the emitter, whether that's the, uh, the tube of a, of a CFL uh, bulb or the LED in an LED light or the arc in a arc lamp, uh, like an HID light. Uh, the higher the surface brightness, the more capability or the mo more potential it has to throw. And there's a lot of other factors that go into that, such as the reflector size and shape and depth and uh, re reflectivity of the surface itself. A quick example and something that actually is in common with this light, uh, the uh, Nightcore TM26 here is also a 4 XML LED light, but you can see the difference in reflector size and depth and even the surface quality, uh, which is actually much higher on the uh, RC40. But here's two lights that produce a similar amount of overall lumens, about 3,500 lumens in total. This one has a throw uh, capability of about 40,000 candela versus about 130,000 candela for the RC40. So when you have such a difference in format, this one being so small and this one being so large, you're, you're gaining and losing things there. There's always a trade-off. When you go with something small like this, it's going to be convenient, light, uh, lightweight, I should say, and produce a lot of lumens, but it's not going to give you the throw capability that this light has. Likewise, this light is going to overheat very quickly, or I should say heat up very quickly, and at that point these lights are designed to uh, step down. Most of these are going to be th uh, thermally regulated lights, so when they reach a predetermined temperature, in the case of the TM26, 60 degrees Celsius, 
um, this light will actually step down to a lower level. Depending on the uh, ambient temperature that you're using this light in, it's going to happen either sooner or later. I live out here in Arizona, and if I go walk in with this light at, at nighttime, you know, it could be 70, 80, 90, even 100 degrees still. At 100 degrees, if I turn this up to turbo or 3,500 lumens, it's going to get to that maximum heat range in about two to three minutes, and it's going to shut down to the uh, next level very quickly. The RC40, on the other hand, has the thermal mass to deal with those four um, XML LEDs in there. So the, the head of the uh, Phoenix RC40 seems to have been scaled just about right that at an, an average temperature of say 65 to 70 degrees that this light can probably run continuously on its turbo which is its highest mode, also level five, I'll call it. It's gonna run at that turbo level without shutting down, without the uh, thermal regulation kicking in and shutting it down to a lower level. Let's go ahead and take the tail cap off of this. This light came nicely lubed and has nice smooth threads right from Phoenix. I didn't do anything to it. I've also performed several waterproof uh, tests or water resistance tests would be the, the better phrase. And you can see that those threads are micro square cut threads, really smooth by the way. I didn't add anything on here to do my waterproofing test. I didn't add any silicone, I just left what they gave me. A little bit risky, but I just wanted to, to show you that it looks like these lights are being prepared at Phoenix the correct way. Okay, here's that proprietary battery pack. It is a Phoenix ABR-L3C18650CC rechargeable lithium ion pack with a 7800 milliamp capacity. Now, uh, one of my small complaints with this light is that the cells that they're using, the individual cells in this pack, and there's six of those 18650s in here, they've, they're using 2600 milliamp hour cells in here. Now, while that does keep the price down a little bit uh, so that they can keep it under that $400 price mark, and we'll talk about that at the end of the review, this capacity is a little bit lower than what's available out there for us today. Actually, it's a lot lower. Uh, there's 2,900 milliamp hour cells, 31, and even 3,400 milliamp hour cells out there. I'd like to see Phoenix at least offer a uh, replacement pack in 31 or even 3,400 milliamp hour cells. Okay, let's go ahead and talk user interface. I know it always takes a long time to get there, doesn't it? Two buttons, power button, mode button. If you hit the power button, it's going to return to the mode that it was on when you turn off the light, uh, or it's going to return to its last mode. In this case, 35 lumens on low. Let's go ahead and press the mode button. That takes us to L2. You're going to notice I refer to these as L1, L2, L3, L4, and then turbo mode. Press it again, there's L3. Press it again, there's L4. Press it again, we're in turbo mode, or its fifth and highest level at 3,500 lumens. Press it again, it steps back down, and then we cycle back through the five output levels again. If I hit the power button, it's going to shut off. Turn it back on again. If I want to enter strobe mode, I press and release, and we have strobe mode. It takes about a second or so for it to activate. Press it again, it returns to its uh, previous output level. Hit this again, it shuts off. If I want to enter momentary strobe mode, I press and hold, and you can see it enters strobe mode. As soon as I lift my thumb again, it's going to shut off. So really nice for the law enforcement community where they need to access strobe mode uh, quickly. It only takes about a second to get there. Okay, price point on this light is $369. I find this, this to be a very high value light considering all of its features, uh, the 12 volt connector that it comes with uh, for charging, for car charging, proprietary battery pack, the uh, LED readout here in the tail, a great uh, user interface, Nice machining all over this light, hard anodized, really high quality reflector up here, great robust bezel that's aluminum to keep that weight down, 2.88 pounds, again, that's just an, an impressive stat to me. Uh, the Olight SR90 here is 3.71 pounds, substantially heavier. A lot of that is because of this battery pack. Remember, on the SR90 slash 95 slash 51 and all of the, uh, the lights that use this uh, battery pack, uh, it is a machined battery pack. It comes as a complete unit. All of that costs money and it costs weight. So uh, I just weighed the battery pack in the RC40 here. Uh, 
since since posting the long review and it was 350 grams this battery pack handle on this light is 540 grams so if you're carrying spares out in the field it's uh, gonna be a lot lighter system uh, to carry just this uh, this battery pack versus this whole handle with a machined uh, assembly on there now the SR95 has replaced the uh, SR90 and it, it is about a half a pound lighter and uses an updated cell and the head is actually smaller cell uh, the uh, throw capability remains the same but no matter what iteration of light you're talking about or generation from the SR90 to the SR95 and SR95 UT variants they're always going to fall somewhere between about 1200 and 2000 lumens we're talking about 3500 lumens with the uh, RC40 and that difference is impressive and as you can see I've already moved into options that's why we're talking about the SR90 you know, somebody who wants to run a D cell format maybe he's got a ton of nickel metal hydride uh, cells and he doesn't care about the the length of this baseball bat light the uh, TK70 he might still enjoy running this it's going to duplicate the amount of throw that the RC40 has again it's just going to come in with a lot less lumens uh, 2200 as opposed to uh, 3500 lumens all right, how does the TK75 compare to the RC40? Well, this is a large format searchlight. This is a medium uh, format searchlight. You can see a big difference in the front ends, the actual aperture, the diameter. Very similar in construction, just on a smaller scale. This uses four 18650s instead of eight, six, eight 18650s in that proprietary pack. 2600 lumens, 90,000 candela throw, as opposed to 3500 lumens and uh, 130,000 candela throw. So you'll see in my beam shots, uh, these two compared as well, and uh, you can judge for yourselves. Most of the time, uh, <laughs> this is an incredible light in itself. This just takes it to the next level. Somebody that's doing some backpacking or something, but they still want a searchlight and they want it to be portable, maybe somebody like uh, Beast12101 who's out there fighting fires, wild, uh, wildfires. Maybe he needs a serious throw light with spotlight capability, but can't endure the size or weight of this light. He might go for a TK75. Still awesome performance. It's just, uh, you know, there's no free lunch. You're going to have to give up a little something to get a little something. As we mentioned before, these uh, smaller compact quad and triple XML lights, um, well, handy and compact. Uh, they're just not in the same category as a, as this kind of a, a flashlight. The uh, biggest thing, the throw capability of this light and the sustained runtime at high outputs. I've got more power available to me in this battery pack, and I've got th more thermal mass that will allow me to uh, run that light for a much longer time than these little guys that are going to overheat quickly. Uh, that'll pretty much wrap things up for this video on the RC40, the shortened version. I hope it's short. If you have more questions, you might check out the longer version or just post a comment down in the uh, comment field. Also, if you like this video, uh, go ahead and click the like button for me. It does help, help me out a little bit and uh, helps me to power all these things with the batteries that I have to buy for them. So uh, thanks again for watching, guys. Stay tuned because we'll have a beam shot video coming next.